11 a.m. and no Fridays. Friday, uh, uh, Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores <clears throat> brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1,315, May 28, 2024. 100 degrees on this day in 2018. I don't recall that. Hmm. When, how many years ago is that? Six years ago. That's right. We and, were still a radio show. That's right. And 36 wow. degrees on this day in 1965. Now, I bet you, not bet, I mean, it was uh, clearly uh, apparent that kids would have been swimming in 2018 on this day. And I hope uh, I hope your parents had gone ahead and take uh, taken care of the beach yeah. you know, with Aquaside products. They're made in White Bear Lake. What they do is clear up the weeds, the algae, the junk, the decaying leaves, all the crud that kids don't like when they're swimming. And the Aquaside products are easy to use. They work quickly. They're registered with the EPA and DNR. There's no needs to let weeds, no needs. <laughs> Did I, I let Clem again. How would Clem do that one? He said, if you have any weed, then there's one products. <laughs> That's There's aqua, no need to let weeds overtake your lake or pond this summer. Call Aquaside. They'll identify your problem, get you the right products. Your beach is going to look great all summer long. Call Aquaside at 1-800-328-9350 or go to Aquaside.com. Hail the flashlight, King. Hail you! And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic. With Chris Reavers, Manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Height in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushi. Uh, given all the extra, no, not extra, given all the uh, celestial events we've been made privy to in the last couple of weeks, your uh, your aurora borealis, for example. Mm -hmm. What an interesting note from Boyd. I cannot explain what I saw. Around midnight Wednesday evening, that would have been last Wednesday, into Thursday morning, May 22nd and 23rd, I was driving into Stillwater northbound on Highway 5 for several miles. It goes in the directions of north northeast. I was nearing uh, Stillwater High School when I saw to the north a cloud that looked like a white sheet draped in the sky. Starting from the lower part, it went up at an angle to the right about 30 degrees from vertical. It was probably five to six times longer than it was wide. The oddest thing is how very straight the edges were, how very sharp the four corners were. It literally was as if a giant white sheet of fabric was in the sky, 100 feet wide and 600 feet long, but not wavy at all, like a flag blowing. When I first saw it, it was brighter, and it almost looked like tiny lights or something, and it was lighting it up. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, how it was exactly rectangular shape, but yet it looked like a cloud. I pulled over after crossing on the Highway 5 bridge over Highway 36 and washed as it dissipated into nothing. I didn't see any aircraft flying around it or anything else flying mm. around that I could not recognize. I don't drink. I don't use drugs. I was not sleep deprived. I'm just baffled as to what I saw and what it could be or what it created. I believe it was a cloudless night at that time. I love stuff like this because I never see it. But we can't. What was that? Well, that's easy. I was going to thought. I thought it was going to be an advertising flag. High noon was around, but that's that's colorful. That's not just white. He, he wasn't seeing things. He, he he didn't have to put that disclaimer in there that I don't drink or I wasn't high. He what he was seeing is the government and their cloud seeding, and basically it comes down to mind control. They mm. see these clouds at <laughs> night overnight. And this mist evaporates and falls down on the communities under it. And basically, it's just another form of the government controlling your mind, making you more willing to be a suckle uh, on the government teat uh, for you to be a dependent of the government. It's all simple. Um, it's proven fact. There's, there's no mystery here. Dave just Bliss, people aren't paying attention. Dave yeah. Bliss writes from Bulgaria. Huh. Sophia, Bulgaria. He often 
sends us messages. Well, you're going to be interested in this one. Okay. Joe, for years, Garage Logic has been my primary source of news from my homeland while living in Sofia. I knew that someday you would produce your last episode, and when that happened, I would become ignorant of much of the goings-on in the land of the 10,000 lakes, but I accepted that fact. I listened to your show as I drove the kids to school and walked around town. You kept me connected with life in the Twin Cities during this 13 years on the Balkan Peninsula. The connection has worked, both, has worked both ways. As you read my occasional letters, folks from back in Minnesota who knew me heard them and would send me notes on what I wrote. Occasionally, when I was back in the States, people would walk up to me at church and say things like, great letter on GL the other week. Your show really helped me stay in touch with fellow Minnesotans. The years passed and your last episode never came. Tomorrow, May 28th, that's that's today, isn't it? Yes. Yep. yep. Sasha and I, along with our youngest daughter, leave Bulgaria to begin our new life back in Minnesota. Oh. I will listen to the May 27 episode on the flight back. Thanks for being my connection to my once and future home, and thanks for outlasting my time in the land of my sojourn. One last time from Sofia, Bulgaria, Dave Bliss. Hmm. So we're we're losing we're losing our uh, our international correspondent. Well, we're losing an international correspondent, but his his uh, analytical skills will still be available to us as he returns to Minnesota. And then I got a letter from Scott. But wait a minute, can I ask a question about that? Yeah, because does his email or are his emails more interesting because they're from Bulgaria? Well, I just like the fact that we had a listener in <laughs> yeah. Bulgaria. That's what I'm saying. Right. So now that he's going to live in Plymouth, to hell with his email. <laughs> What's he doing over there? Or Is he? Uh, I think secret, it was a teacher. I think secret government. Mission? He'll tell us. <laughs> you know, Scott from Invergrove, never afraid, and always pushing back. Uh, he triggered something in my mind today. Okay. And I'll tell you about it. He said he spent the weekend with a kid I used to have and her boyfriend. Both graduated from the U of M a few years back, and they live just down the hill from uh, in St. Paul. They frequent the stores up on Ford Parkway, and at breakfast, both were lamenting the hassle of having toiletries being put behind glass at Walgreens. Their theory was that the white frat boys at St. Thomas University were the ones stealing the toothpaste, not people of color being accused of said thefts. I quickly quipped in about your story about what you witnessed at Walgreens on Grand Avenue a few years ago and asked why would a white frat boy attending a school that costs 40 grand a year need to steal toothpaste? As is typical, they had no answer, instead more wailing about all their problems, which really weren't problems, with no desire to investigate or find a solution to their problems. These kids were raised well by their parents, but the failed academy has effectively poisoned their brains. Now I will have to spend time attempting to reprogram their thoughts. I'm sure you have dealt, this is the sentence that got me, I'm sure you have dealt with the same BS with the kids you used to have. Way to go, failed academy, Scott from Indra Grove. And it occurred to me, no, I did not deal with that with the kids I used to have, which makes me wonder, is there, a, is there, a, is it almost possible uh, perhaps to pinpoint a date when the academy went failed? Now, granted, my kids would be older than his, but uh, the most recent kid graduated from college in 07. All right. Okay. The academy was not failed in 07 if based on her. She didn't come out of it a complete crackpot. What do you think it was in a date? Or then I had event? one I had one graduate in 2000. No uh no indication well, of a failed academy whatsoever with that one. Let's jump ahead to your grandkids. They're college age now. At least a few of them are. Now I've got. Uh, now I had I, a kid. I a kid of a kid I used to have just graduated from college two weeks ago. That's from your son. Yeah. Now well, I, I, your son is a better GLer than you are. So there's nothing. <laughs> but I mean, he he uh, he shows no sign of extraordinary wokeness. Not. No, I wouldn't. No, not growing up in your son's house. Of course not. And then another kid. Well, then that then another kid uh, just completed her freshman year 
at the university. And another kid completed her sophomore year at the university. And I have detected no change in pronouns, no right. uh, nothing. Uh, so hmm. I, uh, it makes me, well, see, then it's still possible that some kids are going to avoid the BS. Somehow. They just do. It's just... I've got um, three nephews now that are graduating high school last weekend, actually, and they show no sign of wokeness whatsoever. And one of them is a borderline genius kid. He needs to be put in with the super smarts. Well, I'm going to give you another clue, and I have no means to empirically provide any evidence that this might be true. All three of mine were pre-cell phone. Oh, you know, social. Let's do some linking. All social three media. of mine were pre-cell phone. Yeah. All three of mine were pre-social media. Yeah. yeah. The last one came close. Twitter came into being, for example, in the uh, realm uh, Labor Day of 2008, but that kid graduated in 2007. All three of my kids escaped having the phone with them at all times. Well, no, but cell phones were prevalent in the early 2000s. But not the cell phones that can do the magic tricks today. They were the that's flip true. phones no, and that crap. Yeah, they were alive and well before cell phones yeah. got as popular. That's they true. lived through the transition, like even like us olders yeah, uh, true. did. Yeah, I, that's all. I'm going to stop there. I have no way to, uh, to, on the service road of life, I have not yet done any linking related to that, but I'm not going to be surprised if there is linking to be done. The it, the invent the invention of the cell phone becoming basically a computer is what has changed people. When it was just a phone, all you were doing was you were you were calling your phone. Once we took the See, jump to information based, I think that's when but people we're, went non social. But we're looking for one reason, and I don't think there is one singular reason. I, I would be comfortable in saying this: the academy. Uh, year to year for the last 15 years has been getting worse. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, for example, let me turn to, I was going to save this for later in the show, but why not do it right now? I, th I think, it was, I think Kelsey had alerted me to this or Jordy. One of the top medical schools in the world, the University of California, Los Angeles, David Geffen School of Medicine. What has David Geffen not got his name on? Right. <laughs> Man, <laughs> alive. That's, that's has, reportedly, has reportedly dropped in the rankings, and some faculty members are pointing to admissions decisions that prioritize diversity over merit. In 2021, Assistant Dean for Admission Jennifer Lucero allegedly became angry when an official with the administration committee questioned whether one black student whose grades and test scores were far below the school's average was a good fit for the school. Did you not know African-American women are dying at a higher rate than everybody else? Lucero reportedly uh, said before claiming that the applicant score should not matter and the school needed such people. Now, let me pause right here, because I would say there are uh, as many black young people who are capable of medical school as any other race or gender or color or whatever. But if you are going to admit people merely based on that political identification, mm -hmm. you can't help but be getting some who are not qualified. Right. So that's why just stick with qualifications and you got the problem solved. Mm. California's public schools are not allowed by state law to consider a person's race during their admissions process. Therefore, Lucero's reaction caused some of the admissions officers to feel uncomfortable, one of them calling it troubling. Uh, this is according to the Free Beacon. I don't know how reliable the Free Beacon is. In interviews with the Free Beacon and complaints to UCLA officials, including investigators in the university's discrimination prevention Bureau, uh, then the, uh, this printed poorly. Uh, never mind. The, there are uh, they uh, 
UCLA uh, uh, required first-year medical students to attend a lecture in March on racial equity, or a guest speaker had attendees chant "Free Palestine." Uh, uh, I should have taken more care in, in printing this. Here's what I will say about this: We have seen it here. Uh, didn't we play the audio of a University of Minnesota freshman? Medical school taking oh, yes. taking their oath. What we're what what we're seeing. I'm comfortable saying this based on empirical evidence that the DEI movement has created its own layers in probably all disciplines: medical, uh, chemistry, math, English, history, whatever. So uh, now, as to whether that's going to prove to be beneficial or not, uh, I I don't think it will be. But that that's that's where the failed academy is headed. Uh, it, it, you know, it's not fair if if a white kid becomes a doctor if a black kid isn't becoming a doctor. Well, I want the black kid to be a doctor, but he better know the stuff, or right. she better know the stuff. I, I and I'm want, sure they can. Yeah. I don't want the dumb kids becoming doctors. No. Oh, what's what's the timeline here, Joe? When are these kids, these dumb dumbs, going to be out in the marketplace? Are we talking? Seven years, 10 years? Well, yeah, however long medical school so, is. Ten, about 10 years from now, you're going to have to be really, really careful. Well, I, I, I've is. joked for years that, you know, we're going to get to the point where we go to the doctor with a, and your gallbladder is flaring up and they're going to fix your knee. Because they're, <laughs> yeah. just, and, and unfortunately, yeah. that might be coming closer to the truth. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I have now reached that stage in life where, when I, I asked for a new doctor, I wanted, you know, when I moved up here, I need a new doctor and I want the oldest guy in the place. And the oldest guy in the place is younger than me. Yeah. That, uh, <laughs> yeah, but he's still little. the oldest guy in the place. He is, and he seems to have his wits about him. Well, probably pre failed academy. The thing right. though, that might yeah. save your, um, your, uh, alleg not allegation, but your fear. My fear is that, um, there is a, at least, from my understanding, there is a lengthy process in terms of being able to come on board full full time. They I, I they weed so. out the idiots. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that's the case. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The dum dums end up going to work for the government. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> May I tell you? Could that, cut it in the medical know, field. <laughs> <laughs> hospital that all the presidents get checked up at. That's where all the dum dums go. <laughs> that's, that's, a, <laughs> that's a hospital. Huh. Walter Reed is a hospital. Yeah, that's what Kenny said. What's the hospital the presidents go to? Walter a Reed. Anyway. May I tell you that yesterday <laughs> I noticed an appalling lack of American flags. Appalling. Mm. I don't think I And yesterday that. I gave in. I succumbed to the hectoring I've received for years. When I initially installed a flagpole in my house, I'm now prepared to admit... I did so incorrectly. What do you mean? Apparently, a flag should be in the front of the property. In yeah. the front. Yeah. Mine was on the side. But wait, what if you have... Because I thought it gave me a nautical look. But what if you have a body of water, <laughs> and that would be the backyard? Yeah. What are you talking? Are you on a lake or no? What do you mean here? <laughs> no, no lake. Or no. Sustainable <laughs> decor. I had the flag sticking out sideways. <laughs> you goober. And I was told from the minute I put it up... That's you wrong. moron, that's wrong. You got to move it. And then yesterday, uh, she was reading me some uh, flag etiquette rules. And once again, I was reminded that you have it completely wrong. The stars have to be in such a look. Anyway, I went out, got the ladder, got the drill, changed the whole thing, stuck her in the front of the house. There you go. So, and I admit. Um, I admit I admit, A, I was wrong, and B, it looks much better in the front. Maybe she would know why I saw so many flags at half-mast yesterday. Is that a typical Memorial Day thing, as I was being told? I've never seen flags at half-mast on Memorial Day. I haven't for Memorial Day either. I no. think it's all, flying uh, high. All the way from Des Moines up uh, all the way to Minnesota yesterday. Yeah. Well, unlike Half unlike uh, Omar, uh, we we know that Memorial Day is to honor the dead right. who fought for us. Omar uh, had to withdraw her 
uh, tweets because she thought it was to celebrate the the veterans who are among us and living. Uh-huh. It's Whoops. it's uh, it's the other no, way. No, we're uh, celebrating guys like Private Edward Mikulski, who made it as far as St. Lowe and left one son and a widow at 25 years of age. I uh, I have emails today regarding all of our fantastic.